So China has just lifted its zero COVID policy after nationwide protests against the strictest, most uh, draconian lockdowns and quarantine measures possible uh, for a country that size, at least. Remember, COVID started in China, so it's been dealing with COVID before uh, Europe and a the rest of Asia was dealing with it and before it spread to America. So from late 20, early 2020, even late 2019, right? They've been dealing with it. And, you know, they've, they've had enough Chinese people. And yeah, they, China has uh, suffered from this idea that like, they could totally stamp out COVID by enforcing like the strictest measures possible. And it unfortunately just isn't possible, right? For a virus that is this transmissible as COVID, it unfortunately doesn't seem possible to completely stamp it out like it's going to spread. Like, you know, shit happens sometimes, you know, what are you gonna do, right? So there's been a lot of fear mongering in America from the right wing about like how the government is going to use COVID as an excuse to become more authoritarian and autocratic and, you know, oppress the people and uh, use government power to enforce their will upon them and control their lives by locking them in their homes. And all of that has proved mostly to be false, right? American lockdowns were pretty lax, even in the first few months of COVID, where like we had to we had to do something to stop the spread, right? And it was on a state by state basis, right? Because of state power, and the federal government was, you know, uh, pretty ineffectual at the time, you know, with Donald Trump at the helm, right? There was no, like, coordinated response, so it was left up to the state governments. So, some states, like red states, right, the states that are really pro-freedom, right, they uh, never really had lockdowns, or no government-enforced lockdowns, at least. They only uh, went into lockdowns because they were forced to, because, you know, everyone in the community got sick, or almost everyone, and, like, they couldn't function yet. By then it was too late, right? It was too late to lock down and they weren't able to flatten the curve, right? That was the big talking point at the beginning of the pandemic. We, we just have to do two weeks to flatten the curve or four or six weeks. And of course that turned into months, that turned into three months and six months, then a year and then two years. And now we're here in 2022, two years later. Um, and now there are basically no lockdowns. Like, COVID is still happening, right? People are still dying and getting sick all the time, every day. But, like, it's we've reached an acceptable level of loss, I guess. It's like, yeah, we have to we have to open things up. We have to go out and live our lives, right? It's just been too long, right? So, if anything, um, yeah, America is like the opposite of China in that respect. Like we just we just let it rip, basically. Yeah, a lot of people died, but hey, that's natural selection, baby. <laughs> that's uh, that's Darwinism. Yeah, they were if they died, then they were too weak to die. They were too old to die. Honestly, um, I do want to prevent deaths, but like, hmm, I mean, I sort sort of get it, right? Like. Like, most of the people, the people who died from COVID were, like, older people or people with other health issues that, like, would have uh, been a burden on our healthcare system, right? I mean, and if you're old, you're probably going to die soon anyway, right? <laughs> so, if anything, yeah, it's your time to go. I know that sounds harsh, but, like, maybe that's true. And, and as we're seeing now, like, since... The lockdowns in China have limited the spread of COVID a lot, but hadn't uh, totally stamped it out. Now, like, that they're lifting these uh, lockdown measures, at least a little bit, a lot of Chinese people haven't gotten infected yet, and they don't have that natural immunity, right? Natural immunity isn't as powerful as vaccine immunity, but it is a thing, right? Now a lot of Chinese People are getting infected for the first time. And Chinese, the Chinese healthcare system doesn't seem up for that. Like, they've had two years or three years to prepare for that. But 
well, I mean, China is a country of a lot of people, right? Over 1 billion people, and seems like seems like it, they're not equipped to take care of all of them, right? So let's see what's going on in China. Well, let's move now to a major reversal overnight in China. So the government there announced it's rolling back COVID restrictions and lockdowns. This comes after frustrations over the strict rules like the protests in several cities. Our Janice Mackie Freyer is right here in Beijing with the very latest. Hey, Janice, good morning. In Beijing. Good morning to you. Of course, people are happy to have Looks a culture nice. aspect of zero COVID lifted. Being able to quarantine from home, it's huge. It removes the dread of being dragged away in a hazmat suit to a government facility. These oh, yikes. Were likely to happen, but they come that actually happens. Yeah, being able to quarantine at home instead of, like, literally being, like, arrested by goons in hazmat suits. Yeah, that is actual, like, literally 1984, right? Like, that is the stuff that, uh, you know, Republican... Uh, dudes in America said would happen but never did it's actually that shit is actually happening in China so it's not like it, it, it was never going to happen in America but apparently yeah it, it can get pretty bad yeah this is like going too far in the opposite direction right like American uh, lockdowns and quarantines maybe should have been a little you know more strict, more on the ball, right? Because, you know, nobody can deny America had a lot of issues with COVID, right? But China is going too far in the opposite direction where it's like, these lockdowns are too strict. It's not at a, at a certain point, like you're not limiting the spread of COVID anymore if you're increasing the strictness because it's like, there's only so much you can do, right? Just limit the spread of COVID. And for a virus this transmissible, yeah, it's apparently just like not, not possible to totally stamp it out unless like, unless like there are co there are restrictions like even stricter that are possible than what China did. But yeah, China is literally 1984. Extraordinary protests that called for an end to zero COVID and then grew into calls for greater political freedoms here. That seems to have jarred the leadership, though Xi Jinping has yet to say anything publicly about the unrest. But as the oh, he has not said back, anything yet. more people are having to confront the actual virus like never before. Restrictions have been relaxed in the past, but the difference now is that things are opening up here with a lot more COVID. Infections are going to serve, people aren't really prepared, and the healthcare system has had no stress test for the wave that's coming. So the exit from this strategy uh. could be as complicated as zero COVID itself, meaning beyond this re moment of relief, which for me has been more than a thousand days in the works, uh, the sense is there are still mm. hard times ahead with this next phase of the pandemic. Hold up. All right, Janice Mackey Freyer for us there in Beijing. Janice, thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. Yeah, so China's system for dealing with COVID has not been, not been stress tested yet, right? They've had, they've had nearly three years to prepare now so they should be ready right to deal with a surge in cases but you know it's possible that um they they won't be able to do that it's possible like that their that their uh equipment is not up up to date like china apparently is uh not as wealthy or successful as it presents itself to be as uh we can look at COVID numbers here and, you know, way down here. Wow, where is, where is China down here? It's, uh, somewhere here. Did I pass it? So yeah, China is 98th in total cases with 349, almost 350 cases reported, that is. And only five thousand deaths now this is probably not accurate right they've probably been under reporting the numbers but even if it's like 10 or 100 times the reported number it's still very small right it's a very small number for a ch uh, country the size of china right that's over a billion people right so 